It is A's Post Game Live presented by Jeep. Scott Reese hanging out with Bip Roberts, and I tell you what, these fans inside the yard were actually chanting sweep in the sixth inning tonight. Maybe a little premature, but a big win in the opener. The A's now 39 and 27, their best record after 66 games since all the way back in 1992, and they're tied for first again because the Rangers lost. We'll get to that, but let's go through some of the relevant points of tonight's game. First and foremost, little bad news, Yoenis Cespedes legging out a ground ball in his first at bat. Little hobbled, had to leave the game with some hamstring tightness, they're saying day to day. So the fireworks in this game started with the very first A's batter, and now we can officially rename O.Co. Co.co, <laughs> because Coco's got eight home runs this year, but this was the first one in Oakland. And that was a very big step in what turned out to be a, a lot closer a ball game than we all thought uh, heading into the late innings. So Derek Norris gets off to Schneid with a little blooper, right? And you know he's feeling pretty good because he got himself a double. But I'm guessing this felt even better. It's our cheap <laughs> game-changing play. Sabathia, Norris, and a three-run home run that blows this thing open. I tell you what, Bartolo Colon's making a case, dare I say, to be an all-star? <laughs> I mean, look at the numbers. They are every bit as good as they were at this point in 2005. We talked about this on the pregame show, and that year he went on to be the American League yeah. Cy Young Award winner. Let's so if Miller wins the battle and gets Smith, it's almost a big momentum shift. Back to the Cardinals, a sigh of relief. He's still in the ballgame, and they escape further damage. Instead, Smith with a two-run single, and the A's blow this thing open. And when they're up 4 nothing, they're not going to lose many games. Man, that's a big point to Scott. And can you say Broadway? Because you're on your way to New York to the All-Star yeah. game. I don't know. He tried New York a few years ago. That didn't work so well. <laughs> He's perfectly happy here in Oakland. But I need a couple of knocks, baby. Be good to her, sleep with her tightly, hold her closely, and she'll be good to you. You want me to, you want me to leave you two alone? Because I can, you know. Yeah, it's getting a little hot in here, man. Tell you what, the Giants' <laughs> top five hitters in the order combined for 16 hits. 16 hits, that hadn't happened since 1933. <laughs> Vita, Vita, who's on that roster in 1933? Come on, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, oh, look at that, we're on the beach for the starting lineup. Same two at the top, Scudero and Crawford. Belt hitting a cool 432 during his 11 game hit streak. Posey back in there behind the plate. Hunter Pence, 359 since the break. Bags talked about that. Sandoval at third. Roger Kieschnick had his first career extra base hit in last night's game. It was a triple. Blanco in center and Matt Cain will pitch. Uh, so Bill Buster Posey predictably back in the lineup today. Missed out on all the fun yesterday with the season high in runs and hits for the Giants, but I expect the day off is not going to be that much of an anomaly heading down the stretch here. Well, you know he's going to be psyched to play today. Huh? And it, Seriously? <laughs> One, two, then hit. Is anybody <laughs> swinging away today? Well, the, Giants, the bunt sign is going to be on from inning one to inning nine tonight, if this is any indication. <laughs> uh, Hunter Pence with a big game. We talked to Bags about that as well. He's uh, starting to hit for a little more power. Been kind of a drought since the break. But, you know, Bill, the interesting thing with Pence here is I think the Giants gave him a big vote of confidence by not trading him prior to the deadline, basically saying, look, we want to keep you around and sign you for next season. But Pence has got to hold up his end of the bargain, so he's playing for a contract. Oh, watch out for that leadoff hitter. What's his name again? Yelich. How about, hey, Rook. <laughs> How about that? No, but see, you can't yell that here because 14 people turn around and look at him. <laughs> well, you know, he, he, he's had some success, but the... It's a long way from Turkey Farm Road to 3rd and King, 2,563 miles to be exact. Buster Posey's journey is getting more famous by the day thanks to the new Buster Bash iPhone app. Right on cue, Buster is bashing like crazy. Four homers in five games entering Tuesday. Nothing like a little well-timed promotion to support the products. It's not uncommon for ducks to fly south, but this is kind of ridiculous. The head of the Oregon duck mascot apparently plummeted to earth from a plane during a skydiving mishap. Seriously, the good news is, if there's such a thing as good news pertaining to a mascot head skydiving story, the duck head was later recovered in one piece, although I'm assuming a mangled piece. We cannot confirm rumors that when passerbys below saw it coming down, they yelled, duck! <laughs> it was funny at six. <laughs> My name is Hiroyuki Nakajima, uh, but you can call me Hiro. <laughs> now, the A's would settle for solid middle infielder, but hey, if they get a hero, all the better. Hiroyuki Nakajima, almost a Yankee last year after New York won his negotiating rights, but 
That never panned out, so he went back to Japan for one more season where he hit a cool 311, which would certainly earn him hero status in Oakland. The horizon looks bright in Santa Clara. Look closely, you can see the 49ers new stadium set for action in 2014. Just beyond that, you can almost make out the Lombardi Trophy. Yeah, a Super Bowl in Santa Clara, likely by 2017. Not that the Niners plan to wait that long to win one, but hey, the horizon is all about delayed gratification, unless you're Brody Brazil, who had no intention of waiting two years for a glimpse of the new digs. Well, you talk about a model of consistency. The A's 16 and 12 in April, 16 and 12 in May, 16 and 11 in June. Halfway through the season, Shooty, and this team showing no signs of slowing down. You know, Scott, I think it's a reflection on the way that this club was built. And we know what the A's are capable of doing if they get in the playoffs. Well, and now we get another National League Central team coming in starting Tuesday, but it's a very different backdrop. The Cubs pretty much auditioning their players with the trade deadline coming up. And the first two pitchers we will see in this series, Feldman and Matt Garza, uh, both could be elsewhere in three weeks. And this is a better look for you. I I'm like thinking that, we're, we're taking Bip's tie yeah. and we're, we're getting rid of it. <laughs> High winds, good for kite flying, smog clearing, and ambiance in scary movies. Bad for hang gliding, big hair, and boat racing. To that end, Friday's America's Cup time trials were canceled due to windy conditions. Okay, so to review, he draws some inspiration from John Elway. He knows less as he gets older, and he doesn't remember what he ate last week. And he's a head coach of the national <laughs> football team. <Larry. laughs> national football. <laughs> Not only beat up, Dennis, but, I mean, you think about the, the serious knee injuries along mm -hmm. the way. I mean, this guy's kind of a freak in nature. Everybody talks about Adrian Peterson coming back from the ACL as quickly as he did. But what right. Gore has done, you know, with the major surgery in Miami coming back and then uh, another major one a couple of years ago with the Niners, so he's... He's sort of defied odds when yeah. you talk about what yeah. running backs are supposed to do in the NFL. Yeah, and definitely what helps him out a lot is that he's got Anthony Dixon, you know, he's got Kendall Hunter, and he's got Michael James these last two seasons that's kind of helped him out a little bit, not let him take as much abuse as he did in the previous seasons. And he's got this offensive line. I mean, he's got some good offensive linemen in front of him, opening the polls. And he's got Bruce Miller now blocking from there at fullback. So he's getting a lot of help, and, and he's doing a fantastic job. Midway through the season, coming up on a bye week, seems a good time to evaluate the 49ers. Dennis, what have they done best in the first half? All right, that said, every coach, in particular Jim Harbaugh, will tell you, well, we've got to get better. So right. give me something that this team uh, needs to address going forward. Have to have pressure in his face or he'll make it for a long day. Good news is, 6-2, and two, game out of first, and you get a week off to get mentally and physically recharged. Yes, we like that as football players. <laughs> Steph Curry is your new Sports Illustrated cover boy, and before you recoil in horror fretting over the SI curse, consider Michael Jordan. 49 cover appearances, and his career turned out okay. Plus, Steph's top billing is only regional, so if there really is a curse, well, maybe it'll confine itself to the Midwest or the East and wreak havoc on Derrick Rose or the Brooklyn Nets. We can only hope. For more, we head out to Sacramento, and that is where we find a man who has never been on the cover of Sports Illustrated. That is Monty Poole, our Warriors insider. And Monty, let's talk about Steph Curry. He's been rated the number three shooting guard in the NBA, but he's actually a point guard, which is an interesting distinction. What does Curry think about all that? Yeah, I guess it sounds to me like uh, when you're a great shooter and he's the best there is, uh, people look at that and they don't see the other things you bring, the other parts of your game. Uh, I, I think he's a point guard. I think other people look at him as a point guard, but somehow he ended up in the shooting guard category because, again, he's got that great shot. So, you know, it'll be fixed. Over the course of the year, I think Steph is pretty committed to uh, showing people that he can be a playmaker. Scott Reese in the Comcast Sportsnet newsroom. Well, the Niners beat the Tennessee Titans and then got on a plane. No rest in between. They're already overseas. <laughs> Yeah, guys, I considered doing this portion of the program with a British accent, then oh, I decided there would be it, absolutely no winners in that scenario, <laughs> so we're just we're just going to play it straight up. But, you know, the best advice I got when I went to London for the first time, look right instead of left when you step off a curb, because traffic, a little backward over there. Now, the 49ers hoping football is not, as they get set to play a Jaguar team that is winless here in the States. A couple of NHL heavyweights going at it in Detroit. Sharks wings, second period. San Jose on a power play. Logan Couture shot kicked away by Jimmy Howard. Later in the second, Daniel Alfredson one time. Uh-uh, Joe Thornton blocks in front. So, 
Good effort on both sides, nothing to show for it. Third period in the Motor City, and it is 0-0 Sharks and the Wings. A BCS banter in full effect with eight undefeated teams in college football's top ten, including Ohio State. Now, the Buckeye football team is number four, but the band might just be number one, or at the very least, a championship contender after this effort on Saturday. How about the Michael Jackson tribute at halftime of Saturday's win over Iowa and the choreographed moonwalk? The entire band choreographing a Michael Jackson moonwalk. Uh, seriously, you've talked degree of difficulty. And, and I don't know if uh, either of you can moonwalk individually, but imagine like 100 of your closest friends doing it in sync. That's pretty cool. I know. That was amazing. I don't think I have 100 friends. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty well, cool. It would be hard just to half. get the group together. That's the other half of the equation. But, uh, but you can work on that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Scott. All right, guys. Oh, you'd like me to take these off? Hey, if Colin Kaepernick doesn't have to, neither do I. <laughs> Cap declined when the league asked him to remove his trademark beats, you know, to appear more respectful in front of the international media. His coach, meanwhile, making friends with the London press, the former Saved by the Bell star, inquiring about a British TV show. I have a question for you. Is uh, Foyle's War, is, uh, is that coming back? Does anybody know anything about that? I just love that show. I've watched them all. And... Uh, Big fan, Michael Kitchen and Honeysuckle Weeks. Do I got that right? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen them all. But uh, kind of hoping there's going to be a return to the show. Anybody know? Uh, no. no, it's not coming back? No. It's done, done? No. Done, done. Ah, oh, it's too bad. What a shame. You still got the headphones? Yep, I'm done. Tuning us out. We'll try to get the headphones off at 1030. Huh? <laughs>